In this video, we will be reviewing dockets, and more specifically, how to find and access dockets should you be asked to do so. When we talk about a docket, this refers to a formal recording in which a judge or a court clerk briefly notes all the proceedings and filings in a case. Dockets allow you to learn not only about decided cases, but about in-progress cases as well. Accessing dockets is something that individuals working with cases often need to do, so you may find yourself looking for dockets or the materials that a docket contains this summer. PACER, which stands for Public Access to Court Electronic Records, is the federal online electronic filing system. PACER contains federal case dockets only, particularly appellate, district, and bankruptcy court cases. State and local cases are not included in the PACER system. Searching PACER can become expensive, particularly for first-time searchers, so beware. Materials cost $0.10 cents per page to access, with a maximum fee of $3 per document. Costs can add up quickly, however, so be mindful of what you access when using PACER. As an HLS student, you have access to another powerful tool for accessing docket information. Bloomberg is a great source for finding docket materials, and with our academic subscription, there's no cost per page. Fees for Bloomberg Law use may be different if you are not using your HLS academic account. Bloomberg also contains more robust access than PACER, including some state and local court records. To find out if your case falls within Bloomberg's docket coverage, you can access the docket coverage map. This tool provides jurisdictions, courts, and ranges of years for which Bloomberg has docket records. You can access the docket coverage map by typing docket coverage map in the search bar and selecting the suggestion from the drop-down menu. Today, we're going to be using a case from the First Circuit Court of Appeals, Glick v. Cunif, which is about whether a private citizen has the right to record video and audio of public officials in a public place. This case was filed in 2010 in the First Circuit Court of Appeals. Let's go check the docket coverage map to see if we can expect to find Glick in Bloomberg's collection. As you can see here, the docket records for the First Circuit Court of Appeals cover the period from December 2006 to current records. Therefore, we should expect to find Glick if we search the dockets on Bloomberg. Let's click on the Bloomberg icon in the top left corner to return to the main page and begin our search. To access dockets on Bloomberg, let's click on Docket Search. Here you have an advanced search window where you can enter information you know about your case, such as the court, party names, docket number, and more. In this case, we're starting with a lot of helpful information. We know the court, the party names, and the docket number. Let's start by searching by the court and the docket number. We're going to select the First Circuit Court of Appeals from the drop-down suggestions and enter our docket number. And here we found our one result, Glick v. Cunif. Searching by docket can be a bit finicky, as every court formats their docket numbers differently, and Bloomberg's search function might not recognize a docket number if the formatting is off. Plus, you might not always know the docket number when you're searching. So let's try again, assuming we didn't know the docket number. Now we will search by court and party names. We're going to select the First Circuit Court of Appeals from the drop-down suggestions, and then add a second line under parties, and require that both parties' names appear in our search results. And once again, we've returned to our one result. Let's click on the result to see the docket information about this case. When you locate your docket, you must update it. Bloomberg doesn't automatically update dockets, so you have to click on the Update Docket button to ensure that the information is current. Dockets can be months or even years out of date if you do not complete this step. As you can see, updating a docket is a relatively quick and easy process. Before updating, we were looking at information from September 25, 2019, and with a few simple clicks, we're now looking at information that is current as of the date of this video, April 16, 2020. What we are looking at here is called a docket sheet. A docket sheet is a document kept in a case file that lists all papers filed and actions taken in a case. This document helps to provide an overview of the people involved in the case, the documents that are a part of the court record, and the actions that have been taken by everyone involved. Each item on the docket sheet will be numbered, have a date, description, and a link to the document's full text or the option to request the item. Not all documents are available, but many are. If it says View, you can definitely access it. If it says Request, you can click the link to request that Bloomberg attempt to retrieve the item for you. 
Let's see if we can learn more about Professor Babbitts's advocacy in this case. Under Keywords, we'll enter Professor Babbitts's name, and then we'll click on Filter. Here we have item number 33, a Notice of Appearance. Let's click on the Request button and see if we can access this document. Don't worry about the collection fee pop-up. You will never be charged. Click Accept. If the document is not available, they'll notify you by email. In this case, we're in luck. We can click the link in the pop-up notification in the bottom right-hand side of the screen to access the notice of appearance we requested. Dockets provide a wealth of information that never makes it into the case decisions and can be a crafty way to strengthen your understanding of a case. Some entries in the record are short, while others contain a lot of detail. If you need items such as complaints, transcripts, orders, motions, briefs, answers, exhibits, decisions, or other items from the record, this is the process you'll follow to see what is available and to retrieve scanned copies of the documents. Docket searching can be tricky, so keep at it even if you don't find the correct result on your first try. Don't forget, law librarians are here to help. If you have questions on this topic or other subjects, please ask us.